So about two years ago, I wrote an article um, which went down like a lead balloon at the time. Um, I wrote it while I was feeling quite bitter, if I'm being honest. Um, it didn't come from a particularly good place. And it wasn't some of my best work, although the sentiment was heartfelt. That article I entitled, perhaps wrongly, Demolition Apartheid. And it was about the disparity between those at the top of the industry and those further down the career ladder. I was taken to task um, by a number of people. And one that stood out in particular was a comment that the people that own companies, the people that are at director level within a demolition company, take a lot of the risk. They take the financial risk and they're obviously under constant threat of a corporate manslaughter charge if something happens on a site. All of which is a valid argument, or at least it was until this week. Um, we've recently reported on a site manager and a digger driver being prosecuted and jailed for corporate manslaughter for their part in an accident in which a trench collapsed and killed a guy. And then just today we've had uh, news from uh, the Sentencing Council, uh, the UK Sentencing Council, that they are reviewing manslaughter charges to put in guidelines and recommended jail sentences. Now, those jail sentences will extend to the likes of site managers and even digger drivers. All of which kind of begs a, well, it begs a couple of questions. So the first question that it begs for my mind is how do you attract site managers to an industry if they are under constant threat that if something happens under their watch, they will be prosecuted, possibly jailed and face a hefty financial penalty. Now, everybody has a duty of care on a demolition site. Everybody has a duty of care on a construction site. But traditionally, responsibility flowed upwards. So ultimately, the, the person with the most duty of care was the company owner. And as a result, they were rewarded financially better. You know, they are the ones that, that, that have the nice cars. They're the ones that have the bigger houses and, you know, the, the bank balance to match. If we're now talking about a situation where somebody that drives a digger for a living or a site manager is in the firing line for a jail sentence, how, how on earth are we going to attract people of the right calibre to accept that kind of responsibility for the wages that we're currently paying? Now, there's another question as well. As it stands today... There's about, and this is only an estimate, but there's about 25,000 people employed within the UK demolition industry. Now, those company principals, or some of those company principals, have a central forum, the National Federation of Demolition Contractors. Those a little further down the, the corporate ladder have representation and a, a central forum through the Institute of Demolition Engineers. But to my estimate, there's something like 22, 23, possibly even 24,000 people within the industry that have no central meeting place, no forum to discuss their concerns and their hopes and their aspirations. That just doesn't exist. They're underrepresented. In fact, they are completely unrepresented. So my question, I guess, is should they be? I'm not proposing the unionisation of an industry. I think this industry is cursed with enough bureaucracy before we get unions involved, but surely the majority needs a voice. The majority needs some central hub where they can get together, be it face-to-face -face or online or a combination of the two, where they can express their fears, their concerns, and, and hopefully steer the, the industry in the right direction from, from their viewpoint. Now, I'm going to publish a, a few bits and pieces in the comments below. First and foremost is a link back to that Demolition Apartheid article, Again, I'm not particularly proud of it, but have a look. I'm also going to publish details of uh, the news stories relating to the guy that was killed in the trench collapse and guidelines from the Sentencing Council. But I'll also put my email address there as well. If you think that the demolition industry, the wider demolition industry, needs some kind of representation, some kind of central hub, please let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And thanks for watching.